All right, this is John Krasinski, Pittsburgh Soccer Now. We are preparing for the semifinals in the WPIL soccer. Uh, we have the boys and girls both playing on Monday and in on the boys' side. Uh, we'll be seeing uh, 2A and 3A classifications in action. And um, with me is Doug Finke from uh, Elizabeth Forward, uh, a school that uh, you know has always been there kind of in terms of soccer. Uh, just in, in the past maybe five, six, seven, or eight years, but just kind of battling in, in within section, but we haven't seen them make a real deep run in the playoffs. But this year, you know, you won your section. Of, in my opinion, very maybe the most underrated section in all of the WPIL. I think in terms of boys and girls and all across the board. I think your your top five teams, very competitive, good battles, uh, just good quality teams. But from everything I've seen this year, so Doug. Great having you here. Great uh, to, to see your program advance this far. But just before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of matchups and things, maybe tell us a little bit more about your team and your players and, and uh, so we get to know them a little bit better heading into Monday's matchup. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, our team is a uh, junior senior uh, led team. Uh, pretty much most of these boys have been starting for three, four years. Uh, so, you know, the program has been building uh, towards this. Um, you know, the rebuild started about six years ago as an assistant. And, you know, the last four years, you know, we've been making playoffs, first round exits. Uh, so the boys have had the experience. And this year, you know, they, they kind of, you know, took that next step. Um, led by, you know, three seniors that are leading us in scoring. And Andrew Smith, Donovan Wojcik, and uh, Robbie Roboski. Uh, all three are double-digit goal scorers. And then, um, you know, a back line that's junior heavy, but anchored by a senior goalie who's in his second year. Uh, Austin Onifre, who has done a great job leading, you know, that back line. And that senior leadership is, is always the key. Uh, I mean, I'm sure at any level, but just, just especially this year with everything that's been going on, I think having seniors just to kind of guide the ship, uh, I'm sure that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, uh, you know, eight seniors, six, you know, five, six starters, and uh, they have, they've, they've led by example. They've made sure you know, in this crazy season that we've had that everybody's, you know, been following what, you know, we need to be doing to make sure we had a, a, a complete season. And obviously this year, you know, we're watching the standings, it was like you're second for most of the year. This Keystone Oaks, is, I thought, was a really good team. You've got Avonworth, who came up from single A. You had Steel Valley kind of, you know, they made the playoffs last year, but they're, they're, they're not an easy team to beat. And then you have obviously South Park at the top. And what's it what's it like all these years? You know, having to play South Park, and they're just they're. I guess they've kind of set the standard, so it must have felt really great to jump leap leapfrog over them at the last week of the season and to, to win the section. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously you said that you know they're the team everyone looks up to. That you know they're the ones that every you know year in year out they're the ones that you know that we have to try and beat. Um, you know, we haven't beaten them in twenty years or is it 18 years in that range? And, you know, we've been close the last couple, some good score lines uh, this year. You know, they got the better of us at our place, and we were able to, you know, with a little bit of momentum with how things went at the end of the year, that we were able to, you know, play a good, complete game and, you know, get them at their place. And it wasn't with a little bit of help, obviously, from Keystone Oaks, who, as you said, they're, they're a tough team. I mean, we were two one-goal games, two-goal games with them for the last couple of years. And, you know, so those two, you know, they make us raise our game. And then even Avonworth, from the beginning of the year to where they were, you know, when we saw them on Tuesday or Monday or what was that? That was Thursday night. Mm -hmm. You know, they made great improvements. And, you know, they challenged us, us. You know, we tied them at their place. You know, and, you know, those were the four playoff teams. That's not even counting, you said, Steel Valley, who was always tough. And then East Allegheny, who brings a whole different side of things with how they, you know, keep it compact for 80 minutes and they, you know, it's a tough game. It's one, two goals every game. And so it's each team brings a different dynamic to it. And, you know, you got to make sure you come, you know, ready to play each day. Yeah. And that was, I mean, it seems like a theme in the quarterfinals, a lot of in-section matches. So you had to beat Avonworth uh, as well. And, and you had to face freedom in the first round. So, you know, it feels like you guys have gotten on a little bit of some momentum going, obviously, you're heading into you're playing Shady Side, I believe. Uh, uh, program, I, obviously, I'm very familiar with, but you're, uh, you know, that's a, that's always a, a a good challenge is to play a, a team like that in the semifinals. If they've been there, they've done that. They've got a lot of good players. 
I don't know how much you've seen from them this year so far, but what strikes you as being, you know, one of the tough, what are the toughest challenges about playing shady side? One, I mean, it's that, that's just a program that knows how to win. Um, but they, I think they've been in the finals or semifinals the last five years in double A, uh, champion two of those years. So it, it's a program that knows how to win. Uh, so obviously going there is going to be a tough challenge. You know, we know uh, they got some very, very strong players. Uh, can't remember the names, but they're number 10 and number nine. Uh, I think, is it Sam Farmer and? Sam Farmer and Joey Anana go to the top scores, yeah. Yeah, so we, we, I mean, we know, obviously, you know, those are two guys we're going to have to key in on. And, uh, but obviously, they're just all around. I mean, pretty much probably all, 50, you know, 15, however number they play, number they play you know, they're going to be solid players. And we're just going to make sure that we, uh, we're ready for the challenge. Yeah, any uh, unique preparations uh, on your end? I've always talked to all the coaches and kind of get some feedback. And most people say, you know, to try to keep it light this time of year, it's a lot of tactical kind of things. But what are you, what are you doing to prepare your team from game to game at this point? I said, yeah, you, you got to keep it a little bit light. I mean, it's been a tight season to begin with. So uh, for us, you know, we kind of focus on two, three little main points that we need to try and do that, you know, they excel at. And, you know, we just try and say, hey, this is what we got to focus on. But uh, realistically, we still focus mainly on ourselves. Uh, as long as we try and play up to our standards, you know, that's uh, that's what we all we can ask for the boys. We don't want to get too in depth and give them too much information where, you know, they're thinking too much and uh, they just get out there and they can play. So uh, in terms of, you know, obviously you don't want to give much away, but I mean, in terms of playing a team like Shady Side, except I, I believe, I mean, I've always said that feels a little bit bigger than most. In the, in, that have football, that play on a football field, they have a little bit more room, it seems like, um, width-wise. Uh, but anyway, just just any basic thoughts in terms of going into this matchup, in terms of what you, and, and really what you guys like to do um, and that sort of thing? I mean, I, I think we're someone who can do multiple uh, things. Um, you know, Ethan Bowser in our midfield is, is a guy who can help control a game. And then, like I said, we got, you know, three weapons that, you know, we look to at different parts of the game. I mean, we do like to try and use as much as the field as we can. And, um, you know, so hopefully that can be a little bit to our favor. I mean, our field out there at Elizabeth Forge is a, a good-sized field. So, you know, that's not something that, you know, is going to hurt us. And hopefully it's something that, you know, we're used to and we can use to our advantage. And that's one thing I don't know if anybody's new to the WPIL uh, soccer kind of uh, – what goes on here, uh, but before Highmark Stadium was built, the finals were played at Elizabeth Ford every year. I don't know how far back that went, but they were, it seemed like a long time, the finals were always played at Elizabeth Ford. So when we were sitting and waiting to hear who would be hosting, uh, it turned out it's going to be Gateway in North Allegheny, but it was a part of me that was kind of like, well, it'd be nice if they went back to Elizabeth Ford, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> especially if we could find a way to win, that would have been nice. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that, that would have been fun. I mean, I, I think it's a nice enough facility. They, you know, it, it could have maybe been considered, but um, anyway. So, yeah, all right. So, it, just in terms of, um, you know, for being prepared for tomorrow, um, anything else in terms of what we should expect, maybe in terms of your matchup, um, you know, uh, with Shady Side? I, again, I know you said a little bit about um, potentially what you're going to see from them, but. You know, I don't know, in terms of preparation and all of that kind of stuff, just any last thoughts on, on this match? I, I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be a good game. I mean, I think I think we post some difficult matchups for some people, and we know, obviously know they do. And I'm um, hoping maybe, you know, for uh, – you know, it's going to be an exciting game for people to watch. Yeah, and I think you can – what kind of coach do you like to, like, leave your seniors, to let, the, let the – the kids in the locker room kind of talk amongst themselves sometimes, or how does that work, like pregame and stuff like that? I, I think they, they they can kind of uh, pump each other up. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they're not huge raw Rawls guys, but, you know, they know how to get each other psyched up and just, you know, I'll give them a few key points and they're ready to go. All right. Well, you know, I'm excited about this matchup. I, like I said, this is uh, to see – your section represented uh, and to see you guys, I, I just felt like when the seedings came out, I thought whoever won your section should have been a little bit higher, but I guess it's kind of tough when you got Deer Lakes and Shadyside, yeah. you know, Quaker Valley couldn't participate, but they would have been in part of it too. I mean, just in terms of this 
double, you know, two A. It's just, it's, it's really, it's really dogfight, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's so many good teams. I mean, you know, I kind of that's kind of where I had a slotted, you know, seating wise, knowing that, you know, Deer Lake, Shady Side, Quaker Valley, North Catholic were also good, and you know, Shuler got the best of us in the regular season. I mean, you just look those top those top ten C's are all, you know, dangerous teams no matter what, and even obviously, yeah. you know, the twelve C with with Avonworth, mm-hmm. or the thirteen with Avonworth. I mean, so I mean, double A to me is just a, it's a very deep deep classification, and you got a lot of dangerous teams. Yeah, and I think the game's come a long way in this area when you start to look at the single A and the double A um, being really deep, not just having like one or two teams that dominate every year. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think a lot of teams are starting to make long, big strides. You know, obviously Quaker Valley, and, you know, Shady Side have obviously been doing very well. Deer Lakes has been coming up, and you know, like you know, I think some of us are you know making strides as well. All right, Doug. Well, um, we'll be watching. Uh, it will, you know, looking forward to seeing all the results come in, and we'll be, uh, you know, hoping the best for you guys. And then hopefully, we'll, we'll get a chance to talk uh, again sometime soon. And uh, good luck tomorrow night against Shady Side. Should be a great one. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. You too. All right. Thanks.